All right. <laughs> hey, let's look up some gnomes, shall we? Let's see here. Gnomes. Glasses on here. I'm going to find some gnomes here. There's some gnomes. Gnomes, 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 gnomes. Let's see. Table of contents. Gnomes. Dwarves also gnomes. Uh, page 16. Page 16 is gnomes. All right, I can learn about some gnomes here. Gnomes. Um, they can be fighters. Cousins to the dwarves. Huh, they can speak a few languages. But, um, they have infravision, I can see in the dark. That's, that's handy. And they're miners, supposedly. Huh, that's about all it says about gnomes. Gnomes. Maybe there's more information here. Gnomes. Gnomes, 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 gnomes. Gnomes. Gnomes, gnomes, gnomes. Gnomes, gnomes. Uh, page 22 is gnomes. 22 is known. I bet there's more information here. It's a it's a, uh, second advanced, right? Lots more gnome stuff here. I bet. Let's see. Can be a fighter, a thief. Um, some languages. Magic resistant. Huh. Let's see here. I wanted to learn about gnomes. These books don't seem to have much about gnome. What if I wanted to play a gnome? Hmm. <laughs> that's right. I have the Book of Gnomes. And that's what I'm going to talk about today is the Book of Gnomes, which um, coincidentally is pretty much the first role-playing book I ever owned, even though it's not a role-playing book. It's uh, And I didn't technically even own it. Um, but uh, I actually picked this one up the other day. The other day being subjective, but not not too long ago. I really wanted to run, just kind of page through it real quick. Um, kind of like the same idea as the uh, old DM binder that I had. Uh, now there's a video on that. Uh, this is the Book of Gnomes. Um, it's by uh, these people's names who I cannot read and will only butcher if I try. But um, it's an amazing book. Um, well, uh, I'm not even going to pretend I can read that. And then, uh, I think it's Rain or Rhine. I'm not sure how to pronounce their last names. And I couldn't figure it out before the video started. So apologies for not knowing how to pronounce your last names, but, uh, beautiful art. Um, anything you ever wanted to about, know about gnomes, and this is not Tolkien gnomes, um, not that really Tolkien didn't really have gnomes, but it's not that kind of thing with that. These are more of your backyard gnomes with the caps. Incidentally, when I play a gnome, uh, which is a character that I have played more than a few times, my gnome is always based upon these gnomes. And not the, uh, something like the complete book of gnomes or whatever, which has them, um, um, Carl Glittergold worshiping, living in the forest, playing tricks on the elves, which are kind of not the gnomes I prefer. But, uh, these gnomes here, of course, they're a bit, uh, small for D&D. &D, so some of the things when I play it as a character, I have to go by the, uh, charts and stuff in Dungeons and Dragons, but in my mind they're the, much smaller than what the uh than what the player's handbook would have them be. And I kinda play them that way too. I just don't pick up a sword and start using it. And it has to be a gnomish sword. It has to be a for me to use something, it has to be gnomish or made for a gnome. And uh gnomish fighter's kinda fun. Gnomish spellcasters of course. Um first edition gnome illusionist is the spellcaster that, that that you can do. Um when I played my or played in fifth edition, the my most favorite character I played there was a gnome gnome druid who would uh well shape into a bear. So that was kind of fun. You're like all of a sudden this little tiny gnome guy and all of a sudden through magic you were a you know big brown bear. So so uh yeah. The Woodland Gnome, they looked to be about two hundred and seventy five years old, which is similar to uh 
the game there. Um, elderly female gnomes, 346. Daily dress camouflage colors. So just kind of flip to it here. There's a page here on what they dress. Their laugh wrinkles. The gnomes are just kind of fun. Uh, they're friends with uh, various animals, which is why I kind of went the druid direction there when I did this in 5e, because you could play a gnome druid, and I always thought gnomes should be druids. Uh, gnomes will leave fun footprints, like bird tracks, instead of their own. Uh, they're cold. They like to wear extra clothing. Which I can kind of relate to that, because I live in the north, where it's cold, and I get cold out easy. So there's a gnome tree. The female gnome. Now, um, this would be why it was a popular book in the library, in my school library, to check out. I had this uh, book actually on the bookshelf, The Complete Book of Gnomes. And it was very popular to check out in the library. I never figured out why, but she, apparently she never looked at the female gnome who uh, was shirtless. So, thing on their cap, their skeleton, their muscular system. Anything you wanted to know about a gnome, seven times as strong as a man. So, gnomes are much stronger than uh, humans, according to this. Never really played them like that either. But uh, right down to their circulatory system. Um, like animals, gnomes see a great deal of the world with its nose. So, that's the one that, that cool thing with the bear. Well, Chapin the bear in 5e, and all of a sudden you have uh, um, advantage on your perception checks with uh, sound. Scent. I always wanted to do that with the gnome too, but in game terms, I didn't see a way to do that. But to give yourself that kind of an advantage, and maybe there is, I don't know. Somewhere in this landscape here is the gnome. I'm sure I've found it before, but I don't remember where it is, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time hunting for it. That might be it right there, actually. And, of course, gnomes run all over the place, have their divining rods. Illnesses and remedies, and this is a kind of a fun little section if you're playing some kind of just a general healer, uh, because you got uh, the various uh, wild, natural type of remedies for various ailments, like dandelion, a few pieces of dandelion leaf daily helps constipation. Did not know that, apparently. Uh, St. John's wort cures depression, birch leaf, prevent kidney stones. So, yeah, there's a section there, section on how their little first aid works. They get bit by a snake or hornet stings. And, you know, if you get start your dress on fire as a gnome, you're going to have just boom, I think. That'd be very bad. Uh, but, yeah, just uh, the gnome's lifespan, 400 years. So that's pretty much what the game game times there. Um, and of course, gnomes grow old. We have garden gnomes, farm gnomes, house gnomes, Siberian gnomes. Uh, how gnomes keep time, they make a cuckoo clock. Actually, somewhere in here talks about how there's a tree that's planted when they're born. This could be right in here, actually. And uh, the oak tree is the However old that oak tree is is however old the gnome is, and when the tree dies, the gnome dies, or vice versa. Yeah, when the tree is big and wide, the planter has died. They get extremely upset if their tree gets cut down, but if that occurs, they plant a new one. Oh, okay. I had thought that the, but it's just when the gnome dies, and then the, uh, yeah. All right, then he's finding a new, a new birthday tree. And they have family, courtship, marriage, wedding. Just a lot of little great art in here. So very, very fun just to kind of page through and look at. Um, caring for various things. Um, their house up here. Hidden entrance, long tunnel. They used to make little, like when I was in elementary school, just draw this kind of stuff all the time. Um, before I'd even seen this book, so. They were mice that were living in my tunnels like that, but quite layout of the gnome house and how it looks underneath the tree. 
whether it's their birthday tree or some other tree. Oh, they're just all of their, I even have the toilet back there just in case you uh, need to know where that is. And it kind of spells out each room, the boat room, the living room, the chimney, and so forth. Here we have some trim in another page there, why uh, people like to check it out. Apparently, uh, cartoon porn was uh, a thing to see when you're a middle schooler. It was not my interest in the book, really. My interest was more the gnomes. But uh, here's her sawmill, so forth. But yeah, there's just a ton that goes kind of into there. Yep, here's some more of the first aid, how it see, he helps these two animals get apart. Um, tons and tons of just cool, cool artwork here. You could spend a long time paging through it, and I don't want to page through it forever. But yeah, here we are. The elves, their relationship with goblins. Uh, house ghosts, trolls, dwarves, river spirits, and other creatures, trolls. Of course, we have the old classic uh, fable troll, not the new newfangled troll, which is looks nothing like that, I guess, as far as game terms are concerned. Uh, gnome inventions. Of course, you have to have some gnome inventions, right? Gnome legends. Legends of the Gnomes. Yeah. It's little, some, little, some little short stories, basically, with little gnome stories and what the gnomes did. I forget how many, but there's a few of them. And let's see here. Get through the other. Oh, oh yeah, the Song of the Troll. That's an exciting one. I'm not going to sing it for you. You're welcome. Uh, some more songs here. Conversation with the uh, Tom Haroldson, who I think is one of the organizers of the book. Um, why gnomes shake their heads. And why do gnomes shake their heads? He shook his head in wonder and stupidity at the narrow-mindedness of the men who commissioned the paintings, the abuses Rembrandt suffered, and the awful poverty endured at the end of his life. He saw the famous Night Watch progressing stroke by stroke. A masterpiece now admired almost a distraction. Shaking his head with pain in his heart, he saw how the painting was sawed down to make it small enough to fit through the door. When it was later moved to the town hall after Rembrandt's death. So that's why the gnomes shake their heads at the stupidity of things that humans do. And kind of in summary. But yeah, that's... uh. That's kind of the Book of Gnomes here. In the very, very back somewhere there is a section where they have some of their works in progress. I seem to remember, but I'm not finding it right now. But yeah, somewhere in here there should be a section of kind of their sketches, though they're not completed sketches, but I don't know. I'm not seeing it. But anyway, that's the... Uh, that's the Book of Gnomes. Um, we bought the Life of Gnomes. How do gnomes live? How do they make a living? Well, how was a gnome's house built? And so forth. So, yeah. And yeah, that's the kind of detail, the kind of fun detail I like to put into a game that uh, you just don't find in the actual books themselves. Uh, Tui, actually, with all their splat books, actually did a pretty good job with some of that stuff. They were interested in a lot of those things like that. You could really... You could really uh, dig into that, but uh, but yeah, that's about it for today. Thanks for uh, checking it out, and I hope you um, have a character race, something like that, that you really kind of get into. And uh, yeah, if you do, I would love to hear about it. Uh, leave a comment below. Thanks. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.